amazing audience we are live with Dave Daly oh thank you it's a How good are you? connecting with you yeah, absolutely absolutely you sound gentle but you definitely have the brawn well you know don't tell anybody but I take the air out of these at night <laughs> I love it <laughs> just love keep it. that between <laughs> <laughs> well, do tell me, my friend, uh, which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this specific time in history? Well, I know that I, we connected on Facebook and you're doing a, a pretty, uh, pretty amazing thing, you know, traveling all over the country in Canada. Uh, how many podcasts? We have had 1987 episodes. Wow. Yeah, and now we've interviewed people, I think just over, what episode is it, Amanda? What? 262 people across the U.S. Man, and Canada. So yeah. that, that's awesome. And so that's how we got connected through Facebook, I guess a mutual friend. Yeah. And like I was mentioning to you before the show, you know, we have about 80 something episodes in with Monster Motivator TV. Yeah. And that's my um, my tagline, you know, Dave Daly, the Monster Motivator. Yeah, I love that. I love yeah. that. So d dive deeper into what uh, Monster Motivation looks like for me, please. Well, you know, it's I'll, I'll go back to the very beginning. So you know, like every other successful entrepreneur, right? The struggle equals strength. Yeah. So I was adopted at 18 months. The first 18 months of my life, I was in a uh, orphanage in Philadelphia. Mm. Uh, I was adopted by an amazing couple and left back in the second grade, diagnosed with ADD, said I had a learning disorder, never graduated high school at 19. I'm sitting in a jail cell, looking at eight to 10 if things don't go my way. Mm. So I was told growing up, not to expect a lot out of myself because I couldn't learn in that cookie cutter mode, mm. right? Uh, fast forward the clock, I've been real fortunate. Um, I've built and sold three companies in three different industries. Mm. So I love to share with people that it's, you gotta figure out your journey. Mm. And I wrote a book and it's called Fear, uh, yeah, Knock Out Fear in the First Round. Yeah, so I'll make sure you got your really copy. Uh, so I speak on, uh, when I do my keynotes, I speak on how to identify and crush those dreaded fear barriers. Mm -hmm. And I always say, I wrote a, an e-book a while back, it's called The Monster Under the Bed. Now mm -hmm. you're 10 years old, mm -hmm. you're in your room, the lights are out, you're under the covers, and you hear this sound. Mm -hmm. And you know for sure it's a big, green, hairy monster ready to come out and eat you, right? Yeah. We've all been there, right? Yeah, I mean, I was just there, there last week. <laughs> <laughs> Until an adult comes in, turns on the lights, you look under the bed, and what is it? There's no monster. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing with these fear barriers. And I tell people, uh, fearless, when people tell you to be fearless, it's the wrong advice. Fear is a feeling just like love, just like anger, just like hate. Yeah, it's what you do with it. Yeah. And in order to become courageous, you got to break through that fear. So all through that process, who did you learn uh, this uh, type of fearlessness from? Where did that come from at that specific time? But you know what? It's, it's going through. So I always say that action, uh, massive effective action is fear's kryptonite. When you take that massive effect of action, you don't have time to let fear stifle you. Yeah. You don't have time to let fear stop you and move you backwards. Yeah, yeah. Why will you continue to be that guy that looks into fear's face and says, hey, I'm doing this? Yeah, you know why? Because we have limited time, mm -hmm. right? We're here at a, for a limited time. And if I live a full life, I'm into the third quarter, right? I, I look at it as a football game. I'm in the, I'm in the third quarter if I live a full life. Yeah. So why, why would I let fear stop me from living the life that I want to live mm -hmm. on my terms? And you know, a lot of people ask, you know, w what's the definition of success? And for me, it's simply living life on your terms, mm -hmm. whatever that is for you. Yeah, I love that. Tell yeah. me one other thing you've done consistently over the last three years, please. Uh, going to the gym oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and eating well. But no, it's uh, it's it is. I do everything I can to it to f get myself out of that comfort zone, stay out of that comfort zone, and figure out how to grow. Doesn't mean you're always going to win, yeah. right? Because you're still going to learn and grow even if you do lose. Yeah, I love that. How does it make you feel though, knowing that you've been consistent uh, doing the gym and uh, putting your physical uh, being in? Well, you at, know, at forefront. well, you know, one of the things people always ask me, like, I'll be 52 in September, and, they, wow, and pe pe people <laughs> ask me, you know, all the time, how do you stay consistent with the gym? And one of the things is, and in my book, I share that, eight, probably about 18 years ago, it was almost taken away from me. Mm. 
Yeah. I had a real bad motorcycle accident, broke everything on this side, punctured a lung, mm. and it was almost taken away. I could have been paralyzed, I could have been dead. And after I recovered, I realized, or during the recovery and after the recovery, I realized that, man, it could be, it could be taken away like this. Yeah. So, so that created a diff whole different perspective. Mm. Why would you suggest to someone that's listening that they do that, that they put emphasis on their physical body? Well, because, because your, our body is our vehicle to get us through this lifetime. So the better we take care of it, the better the maintenance, the easier the ride. Yeah, and you look great for 52, my Th friend. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm I appreciate you. it. And yeah. you know, it's just, it's good living. I, I tell people all the time, I'm, I'm as boring as you can get. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't gamble, but I love it. Yeah. Where's <laughs> the best place for people to connect with you? Easy. Dave Daily MM. Dave Daily MM com. That's where all of our social media is, our website, um, anything you want. So yeah, that it's real easy to find. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's switch gears for a moment. Let me invite you now into my imaginary time machine okay. that is surrounded with beautiful, warm blue Caribbean water. Okay. What is your earliest childhood memory? Earliest childhood memory. Um, earliest childhood memory. I would say uh, waking up real early, running down the hall, and Christmas morning, just, just so excited, waiting for my parents to trying to get my parents' attention to get up, yeah. because because I see all these these big boxes and one of them ha has to have my name on it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it just has to have my name on it. How old do you think you were in that? In that oh God, I was uh, I was a little guy, yeah. and yeah, like and two, I would three. I don't know if I can remember that far back, okay. but I I would say I would say probably a. Uh, a probably a little bit more than a toddler, All whatever right. that would be. Right. I would say earliest memory, yeah. um, and just have some, some awesome, awesome memories uh, growing up, and uh, even with the struggle, yeah. you know, because again, school was not my, um, I didn't do real well in school. Yeah, why do you think that memory is so clear though? Because uh, it just felt so good, and also now, looking back, I would say so much gratitude Meaning, I was adopted as an infant, right? Mm. I could have went a whole different direction. Yeah. So I was so, I, I think the gratitude, um, that's, that's what I would attach that to mm. and probably why that uh, comes to. And, um, yeah, do you see it connecting to who you are today? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And also I was, you know, I, I talk about this too in my keynotes is, you have the option, you always have the option to look at this or look at that. You can look at the gifts or you can decide not to look at the gifts. And one of the gifts that I was given in the last few years is being able to relocate my parents who were elderly, mm. right, out here from New Jersey and being able to be there with them uh, to the end and yeah. them knowing that I was there uh, to the end. So now life gave me gift to be able to give back to them because of what they gave to me. I love that. And that's, and I always, I, I love, I, I love to live my life that, like this. Mm. Don't cry because it, it's over. Mm. Smile because it happened. Yeah, I love that. You know Smile what I love about, because it happened. Can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created yeah. in my mind? No, I love a, the fearless running into the gift that you know you deserve. So mm. like to see the child that's fearlessly running into that gift, yeah, and getting that. I love that picture. To see that you're doing that now, you've embraced the concept of what is necessary as an individual to fearlessly take action, to move. Mm. It's so necessary to move, you said, in spite of fear and not be, you know, stopped by it. And that helps, you know, it's not really about saying, okay, I'm feeling fear, I'm not doing this. It's mm -hmm. about feeling fear and then still moving. Moving, moving forward, yeah. creating that courageousness. Yeah. Um, and that's interesting, that's a great perspective on that, that I wouldn't have uh, connected. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, sometimes it's hard to see the picture inside the frame. Mm -hmm. And I've, and over the years, I've, I've had partners and then I've also done, done business myself. Sure. And whenever I, the partners that I've usually connected with, right, enhanced my weaknesses and mm -hmm. vice versa, yeah. right? So I've always been the front guy. I've been the one that grabbing them and, and <laughs> pulling them through that fear yeah. barrier. It and connects. then they're the ones that are times where they're grounding me. Yeah. They're like, no, 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 come back. Come back here for a minute, you know? So it. yeah. it's, it's, so it's interesting perspective how that's my memory. Yeah, and how that connects and 
how that happened repetitive through my life. Yeah, it's, it's been fascinating, like having these conversations yeah. and seeing that theme uh, built from that earliest mm. childhood memory to who you are today. But if we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? My favorite song? Um, it was Leonard Skinner, Sweet Home Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah. is, which is cool, right? Yeah. I mean, so are you originally from Alabama? No, no, I'm okay. Jersey. I'm, I'm born and raised in Philly, Jersey. Sweet. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, you said that before. You did yeah. tell me that. Well, you know, it's cool. Though. It's funny how you could connect these songs, though, like mm -hmm. the names of it. I mean, mm -hmm. definitely the guy running to the Christmas tree was all about Sweet Home, wasn't it? It, it Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and, and just... Um, just un just just pure joy yeah, yeah. you know pure joy and that's why i have such a connection uh with dogs i believe because mm. i love how and i the only way i can describe this is i wake up every morning and my god it's like every day is christmas morning yeah, right yeah. With <laughs> tails wagging he's jumping up and down i can leave for 10 minutes come back yeah. every day is christmas yeah. morning yeah, and it's that. just they live in the moment yeah he's connecting amanda he's connecting <laughs> <laughs> they they live in the moment yeah. you know and and if we can mimic that right as human beings I, I think my personal opinion i think that is probably the most difficult thing as a human being to do on a consistent basis is to stay in the moment. Yeah. I, I do. I think yeah. I think that's that is the, the most difficult but mm. the most rewarding. Yeah, I agree. Like right now <laughs> it's just been great. But let's switch gears for a moment. Yeah. But in fact, you know what? We've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's mm. yes or no. We're going to move pretty quickly. Yeah, you yeah. ready? You ready? Let's do it. Have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? I haven't chosen no. Yes or no. no? Are you married? No. Do you have children? No. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. How about three hours a week? That, yeah. What about yes. screen time, the phone and the computer? More than eight or less than eight hours oh, a more. day? More. If you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents Dave Daly, what would you say that is? The darkness is only temporary as long as you keep moving forward. The only time it becomes permanent is when you go back into safety. I love that. Well done, my friend. Dave Daly, <laughs> this is a great pleasure. Thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Love Boom. it. Thank you, my friend. You're welcome. Did Thank you have you. fun? I had fun. I love it. It was awesome. <laughs>